Hey guys, Dr. Brad Bodel here. And you've probably heard me say before that whether it's from relation to your thyroid health or just your health in general, sleeping is a huge factor in your recovery and in your progress. And no matter what aspect of your health that we're working on, you guys also likely know that I love easy, practical strategies that you can trial at home and see whether or not they work for you. But I realized as I was working through some potential video topics that mouth taping is something that checks a lot of these boxes, but for whatever reason, it isn't something that I've covered on the channel before. It can be super supportive to a number of people's sleeping patterns. It's cheap, it's easy to do, it's something that I use fairly frequently in my own practice, and I'm always trying to take those practice strategies and make them available to everyone. And honestly, I think it might've just been one of those things where I figured you guys already knew about it, and therefore it might've just slipped through the cracks. But hopefully it's one of those things like using apple cider vinegar to support our digestion. It might be simple and obvious to some, but not to everyone. And as always, I wanna present these things to you so you're just aware of them and you can implement them if they make sense. So let's get into the somewhat weird topic of mouth taping, go over some of the controversies, talk about how to apply it and why it can be helpful. And as always, if you guys like these kinds of things, please remember to leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And also, if you haven't done so, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for new videos every Thursday. Plus, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, make sure to stick around until the end of the video. That way you can learn what steps you need to take to get that process started. Now, whenever I set out to make a video, I always try to take some of the practical information that I've learned from working with patients, and then I combine that with doing a little bit of extra research. That way I can provide you guys with the data and context to make sure that the topic is fully fleshed out. And the funny thing about mouth taping is that you know, I knew it could be effective in terms of real world application. And all I needed to do was hop online, get some additional information, and we'd be good to go. It'd be a super easy, non-controversial topic. And again, hopefully it would deliver to some of you some applicable strategies that are really helpful. Unfortunately, I quickly learned that some of the big medical institutions in the United States are not fans of mouth taping. And I thought to myself, why do they hate all these fun things? But by just doing a quick search on mouth taping, you're going to see a lot of objections. And it's going to include things like, there are only a few small trials, there are a number of side effects, and if you're going to embark on doing something crazy like this, then you need to make sure to talk to a specialist. So even though I thought this topic was going to be mostly non-controversial, if there are objections, I do think we should go over them. Now, whenever there's limited research, I think we're all probably on the same page in saying that, you know, we should do more trials, we should do more testing, and we should try to get more information. That way we can understand it better, and that way we can apply it to the situations that demand it. However, at the same time, just because something has limited research doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad idea or that it's not effective. But when we do dig into the research, we find some interesting data. And these are findings that these health institutions largely agree with. They just don't always say that up front. For example, one small study that is often referenced states that although mouth taping won't cure sleep apnea, it may improve airflow, reduce snoring, and lead to more deeper restful sleep. The study then goes on to say that the more severe someone's snoring was at baseline or at the start of the study, the greater the improvement that they experienced with mouth taping. Before concluding with the statement that, mouth taping could be an alternative treatment for people with mild obstructive sleep apnea before turning to CPAP therapy or surgery. Another slightly larger study looked at the effect that mouth taping had on asthma control. And although no improvements were found when comparing the treatment group to the control group, there weren't any adverse effects reported and most people tolerated the therapy well. The point of all this is to say, sure, we may have some limitations in terms of our modern testing and data, but what we do have is mildly supportive to the fact that mouth taping may be helpful, and in general, we don't see a lot of drawbacks. But even so, one of the big concerns of a number of those health websites is the potential for side effects. But what exactly are we talking about here? 
Is there a risk that we might suffocate ourselves in the middle of the night? And the answer to that is nope. <laughs> in fact, a number of these objections are pretty silly in my opinion, and they can be avoided by just doing a few common sense things. So to be specific, you'll see things like irritation on or around the lips, pain when removing the tape from your lips, disrupted sleep due to irritation from the tape, anxiety for people who are uncomfortable having their mouth taped shut, and any discomfort or difficulty breathing in general. Now, do I want your lips to be irritated or hurt by the tape? Of course not. But that's something that we can work around. And in the grand scheme of things, that's not something that is actually dangerous to your health. However, the objection that I do think we should pay some extra attention to is the difficulty breathing objection. Specifically, if you're someone who has difficulty breathing through your nose. But again, let's use some common sense here, guys. If you are someone who doesn't breathe very well through your nose, and we are going to limit your ability to breathe through your mouth, which is most likely your main resource or your main avenue for getting air, then it's probably not in our best interest to tape our mouth shut. So if you're someone who has a deviated septum, nasal polyps, or chronic congestion due to allergies or sinusitis, then use some sense here and be extra careful if you're going to trial this therapy. And finally, there's that old recommendation that we should speak with a specialist before employing any new therapy, but especially something as weird as mouth taping. Now you guys know that I will never discourage anyone from getting a second opinion or seeking out more information and help. But with all the love in my heart, do we really think seeing a specialist is going to be a good use of our time in this situation and they're going to provide us with some solid feedback and information? I'm not so sure about that. Instead, do some thinking and assessment for yourself. And keep in mind that mouth taping is like anything else in health. While it can be a useful tool or strategy, it isn't gonna be for everyone, and that's okay. Each individual is going to have a different set of health circumstances, and therefore, different needs. And we wanna apply strategies that fit with them and their body and help them to achieve their goals. But if you have been struggling with sleep and energy issues that are related to your Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism, and you think that mouth taping might be an option for you, let's talk about how we actually apply it. And spoiler alert, it really isn't rocket science. So all you're gonna do is take a small piece of hypoallergenic medical tape, and you're gonna place it either vertically or horizontally across the front of your lips. Now the goal here is to not do anything forceful or try to seal your mouth shut. Instead, we're simply trying to train our jaw to be in a more natural position for breathing. If you need to cough or do anything else that requires you to open your mouth, then it should be really no big deal for you to open your mouth and remove the tape. If we think that someone is a good candidate for mouth taping, then I will usually have my patients begin by starting it at night. But if you're someone who's a little bit nervous about that, then you can start by implementing small training sessions during the day. I've seen people begin by doing 10 minute sessions and then building that up over time, allowing their body to get used to the nasal breathing. Once they feel more comfortable and more confident, then they can trial it at night. Just like some people need some extra time to get used to it during the day, most people are going to have a little bit of an adjustment period while they start to adapt it to their sleep cycle. This might take a few days or weeks, but just try to not get discouraged if the tape comes off in the middle of the night. Remember, this is a training process, and it can take some time to learn a new skill, especially if we've been breathing through our mouth for most of our lives. But although it might seem a little counterintuitive, by using the tape to close the mouth and bring the jaw forward into a more natural position, we also bring some of the soft tissues and soft palate forward, which then opens the airway from our nose into our trachea and lungs. This allows for potentially larger volumes of air to reach our lungs, more oxygenated air due to the humidifying and turbulent factors within our nose, as well as supporting our immune response to airborne viruses and pathogens, while potentially assisting with the health of our teeth, gums, and oral cavity in general. If after a few weeks of consistent mouth taping, you're not noticing any benefit, then this might not be a strategy for you. 
But if you are having more restful sleep and you're waking up in the morning feeling more energized, then feel free to continue at a frequency that feels best to you. There's no limitation on mouth taping as it's simply promoting a more natural way of sleeping. And one that some will argue is the way that we are intended to sleep. Some of my patients feel so good doing it that they continue to do it on a regular basis. Others may pick and choose when they employ it based on convenience and choosing nights that they know they wanna get extra quality sleep. But as I said before, I do think mouth taping can be a valuable tool when it's applied appropriately. And the nice thing is, with very little drawbacks and side effects, unless you're worried about the side effects that we discussed, it's a great option for you to try out for a few weeks and then determine what you wanna do from there. But feel free to share your thoughts by leaving me a comment. Is mouth taping weird? Is it something that you love? Is it something that didn't make much of a difference for you? And maybe the thing that I'm most curious about is, is this something that you've heard about before? And do you like it when I present some of these more kind of off the wall and niche strategies to you? Thanks as always, you know, I love hearing from you guys. But if you did like this information, but also know that you need some more help and support when it comes to improving some of your Hashimoto's and hypothyroid related symptoms, and you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, either in person or virtually, then you can get that process started by sending an email to contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com. Once we receive your message, my staff will reach out and make sure that you qualify for a free consultation. If you do, we'll get you on the schedule, then you and I will be able to sit down, talk about your symptoms, talk about your goals, and see if this is something that I can help with. As always, the consultations are absolutely no pressure. We just wanna make sure that we're a good fit to work together and that you feel comfortable moving forward. If you'd like some other resources for learning or improving your health, you can always grab either one of my free downloads listed in the description box. You can check out any of the other videos on this channel, or you can follow me on social media where I post daily information and strategies to help you out with your health. But that's all we got for today. I love and care about you guys. I hope that you're doing well. Thank you for the continued support. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out. As a reminder, if you haven't done so, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. But my name is Dr. Brad Bodel. I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you in the next one.